Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Assistant Director for the Office of Technology, Innovation, and Entrepreneurship, Alice Liu. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the USC Technology Innovation Boot Camp Final Showcase. I'm Alice Liu, and I will be your host for today's program. We are super excited to showcase the hard work of these incredible high school students from across the country. Please allow me to introduce to you Dean Yortos for some opening remarks. Thank you, Alice, and a warm welcome. A warm wel welcome to all of our, all of you in our audience, students, parents, faculty, and staff, and all who have contributed so much to this USC National Academy of Engineering Technology Innovation Bootcamp for COVID-19. Today is the final showcase, exciting and intriguing. COVID-19 has challenged us as we have never been challenged before. Yet, this challenge has helped us in a different way. You see, this bootcamp was previously held on the USC campus. This year, we are using Zoom. We are more connected than ever before across the world. Indeed, today, we have more than 100 students representing 24 states in the United States and two different countries. So the reach of, our, of this year's innovation camp has been much, much uh, longer than we expected. As we started this camp, we realized that it is also echoing the themes of another much bigger initiative, the National Academy of Engineering Call to Action. This initiative was launched in April and also addresses COVID-19. It is a cross-generational initiative, which is actually what is required to combat such a, a deadly enemy. And it involves very accomplished engineers all the way to undergraduate students, particularly those who are in the Grand Challenges Scholars Program. Many of these uh, Grand Challenge Scholars have been part of this camp, helping creating pods, mentoring, advising, and guiding our uh, high school students. In fact, there will be another demo day on August 6 of the NAE Call to Action. Any, everyone here is invited to attend. And then, particularly for our high school students, there will be a Gen Z engineering webinar on August 11. That will be an exciting event as well uh, as it um, ad ad addresses the uh, collaboration of and, and Gen Z engineers in how to address, in how to, to attack the COVID-19 uh, crisis. We will send information on all of this uh, as they uh, uh, develop, and I'm, I'm uh, hoping that many of you will attend. I wanted to close by congratulating all our high school students who participated in this camp. I hope that you are all aspiring engineers, or at least you understand what engineering is. You know, we believe that engineering is the enabling discipline of our times. It is one that will help us engineer a better world for all humanity now and into the future. We believe very strongly in this mission. But this can only succeed when engineering becomes more human-centric, one that is also inclusive and diverse. Indeed, this camp is very much gender balanced. I understand that about 52% of the high school students participating are women, and it's also very inclusive, with almost 40% of students coming from underrepresented groups. These are all wonderful statistics that tell us how uh, widespread is the concept of engineering and how we can actually um, uh, garner gather all the engineering talent in the world to be able to solve the important challenges that we have. I would mention also a little bit the Grand Challenges Scholars Program, which is essentially uh, the uh, in between high school and the uh, uh, aspi aspiring and uh, experienced engineers. It cultivates five mindsets, technical competence, interdisciplinarity, innovation and entrepreneurship, understanding people and cultures, and the societal impact of engineering. I hope that this, in this short camp that you attended, you were able to experience the growth of many of these mindsets. 
and that this experience will make you choose engineering and the Grand Challenges Scholars Program as your next destination, where we redefine engineering as who we are, what we do, and what we look like. It is this mindset that we believe was in, instilled in you, in all of you, during this bootcamp. Before I close, I wanted to thank Drs. Alice Liu and Ross Road, the 23 uh, Grand Challenge Scholar volunteers who volunteer to help this effort, my NAE Executive Committee colleagues who help uh, make, uh, shape this particular event, for supporting the effort, as well as the USC Viterbi Office for Innovation and Entrepreneurship who undertook uh, this effort as well. So thank you, good luck, and fight on. Thank you so much, Dean Yorzos. We do have super excellent students. We were so impressed by the response of high school student innovators to our boot camp call. In our application open for less than two weeks, we had hundreds of high school students from across the country apply. And in the end, we chose these 110 remarkable students. These last few weeks, these students have been in an intensive and immersive innovation sprint to develop solutions to combat the COVID-19 pandemic. In two and a half short weeks, these students have gone from nothing in hand to identifying an unmet need to prototyping a solution to combat COVID-19. They were guided by our excellent USC and Global Grand Challenge Scholars in a class on design thinking, as well as technical workshops teaching them engineering skills. As varied as 3D printing, uh, wireframes, or SolidWorks, um, all of these to support the development of a viable solution to combat a challenge created by COVID-19. These students even went out and interviewed customers. They stayed up late brainstorming solutions and made multiple prototypes. Needless to say, this has been an intensive last few weeks for these students. We're here today to celebrate these students and the marathon sprint they have just undertaken. So our program for today, each team will be giving a three minute pitch followed by two minutes of Q&A with our judges. Our judges will be selecting one team in each room to receive a $500 cash prize. We are honored today to have the following judges. Stacey Cumberbatch, Managing Partner at Blended Impact focused on investing in inclusive tech. Rafe Gaspar Asoka, Investor at Canine Partners, Early Stage VC Fund investing in emergency emerging technologies. Dr. Sandeep Gupta, USC Professor of Electrical Engineering. Dr. Ellis Men, USC Professor of Biomedical Engineering. Thank you judges for being here today with us. Now, with 110 students and 20 teams, it was impossible to keep everyone in one presentation room. We will be splitting up into two presentation rooms. So please refer to your program booklet for the list of teams, students, and short descriptions. You can choose to be in either room or even hop between the rooms. This room will be room one. To access room two, you can see the link that is in the chat, or you can also um, look at the screen. We've made a tiny URL. You can type that in and that will give you entrance into room two. If at any point you want to return to room one, simply click on the original link you received in your email registration. At the conclusion of all our pitches, we will return to this main room to wrap up and announce the winners. So at this moment, guests, please select the room you would like to join. Room one, we will get start, started shortly here in about one minute. And teams, get ready.
Okay, we'll give another 15 seconds for people who are exiting to go to room two. Judges, are you ready? Teams, are you ready? Oh, I heard that we might have some problems with the link. Okay, sorry. Yes, we're gonna send that link right now, the non-tiny URL. Okay, sorry, we had a couple of technical difficulties. We'll give an extra 30 seconds. And teams who are in room two, make sure you click on your panelist link. And our team, USC team, could we drop in the program booklet into the chat for all attendees? Yes. Thank you. Okay, I think we will get started here in room one. So in this room, we have our two judges with us are Dr. Ellis Munn, USC professor of biomedical engineering, and Rafe Gaspar, a so investor at Canine Partners Early Stage VC Fund investing in emergency technologies. Um, judges, would you turn on your cameras and are you ready? All right. I ready to go. See you, excellent. Teams, are you ready? All right, our first team up today is Mentor Ed. When you're ready, go ahead and share screen. We will be timing you three minutes. Emily, are you ready? Yes. Hello everyone, my name is Emily Mojica. Hi, my name is Etienne Zhu. And today we will unveil our mobile application, Mentored. Initially, Mentored was created for students in grades 9 through 12, but we decided to expand our resources to students in college and beyond. Due to COVID-19, many students like myself have lost connection with our teachers. This past semester, my peers and I did not have the privilege of getting daily live sessions for all of our classes. My friends were left with work that they did not know how to complete. After hours of interviews, we realized that students from all over the country were left to themselves with little to no outside support. This is why our team created Mentored. In the past, 2,200 math members at my school each tutored two kids per semester, providing hard skills and social interactions. Imagine if both of these aspects of tutoring are still possible. Help is certainly out there, and help is certainly needed. We strive to connect the two during and after the pandemic to combat the loss of social interaction and boost education. We've designed a software that facilitates these peer connections. When a school purchases a domain, every student in the school gets an account. Tutoring clubs and volunteer organizations can easily register their members under the school. All students in the school have access to help from these organizations via the app. Along with the focus on schools, there are other features that make our tutoring app unlike any other. First, app analytics can help teachers verify service hours to members of these clubs. Second, students can track their own progress through the app, measuring how close they are to success. Third, an option to register with a parent guarantees that parents control who their minor child is contacting, including people from the same school or other schools through the app. There are also additional levels of security. Mentor-student duality means that a user of the app can be a mentor and a student. For example, a math club member can teach algebra but receive help in history. Once a mentor performs exceptionally well repeatedly, they are rewarded with bronze, silver, and gold badges. These can be used for service hours and for tracking club requirements. And it also gives students an idea how long a mentor was with the system. Our next step is to partner with a tech company to get this app up and running. We would like to make our app accessible to students worldwide. Imagine swiping through our globe feature, clicking on a region, and finding a tutor instantly. 
Now the next time I need help with my Spanish assignment, I can either receive assistance from a native speaker in my area or from a native speaker in Spain, Mexico, or even Argentina, all thanks to Mentored. This idea would not have come to life if it wasn't for our amazing team and mentor, Anna. Thank you. Thank you, team mentored Ed. Um, judges, questions, you have two minutes. And I'll call on Dr. Ellis Munn first. Yeah, I'll ask the, the first question. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, I'm curious in your interviews of different stakeholders, what did you find was most valuable in shaping the format of the app that you've designed? Well, um, what we found most valuable was that some kids proactively find resources and they aren't typically the ones who struggle during COVID. However, by making it easier for everybody, everybody who's in a school to access resources, then that means that we can guarantee that struggling students have the resources that they need. So that's why we decided to go through schools, which is unlike any other mentoring app that we've found. Thank you. Rafe, do you have a question? Yeah, I, I mean, I just wanna say I love the mission and aspect of peer learning and improving um, both continuing to improve education now and also the social aspect as we're all stuck remotely. Um, so I love that. I'm curious how you think about um, balancing the supply of both mentors and students on your platform in the long run. So in the long run, we believe that there are plenty of students who need help. So that means that the, dem the demand is rather high. As for increasing the supply to meet those demand, we understand that there are a lot of organizations who really want to reach out to students during COVID, but they really don't know how. And so through this platform, we're allowing the supply to meet the demand. And so we can solve a problem that has occurred during the pandemic. Excellent. Thank you, team Mentor Ed. I'm ready to call up the next team. Our next team will be CB19 Lock. We'll, we'll reserve all of our applause until the very end since the virtual setting, the applause is a little bit different. All right, CB19, whenever you're ready, you can go ahead and get started. Hi everyone, I'm Navish and this is Project CV19, a smart commercial building entrance system. So I was talking to one of my friends who works at a local boba shop and she told me about this time this guy came in without wearing a mask, without any gloves, breaking all social distancing rules and demanded a drink. Obviously. Um, I'm having some technical difficulties. I'm going to stop sharing and try to reshare. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, back here. So um, sh this guy just came in and threw a huge tantrum about not getting served. By the time he did calm down, it was easily been like maybe 10 minutes and he just ended up wasting the employee's time, resources, and he potentially put everyone around that area in danger by not following any COVID-19 guidelines. So I developed CV19, a smart entrance system that gives access to establishments by monitoring the occupancy of an area and then using computer vision to determine if the person's wearing a mask or not and then letting them in. As I approach the entrance without a mask, the system automatically locks me out, stopping me from causing potential problems in the establishment. Now I come back wearing a face mask. The technology lets me in. It then takes account of me, keeping track of the occupants. As I approach the entrance without a Cool, now let's look back at this prototype. We see over here it's made of Legos, but it's obviously gonna be made of real electronics. But we have a rack and pinion bolt lock, which can be later be adapted depending on the type of door a customer has. There's also an ultrasonic sensor to make keep track of people entering and leaving. 
So if there are too many people in area and it's impossible to social distance properly, it'll limit access. So as we saw in that video, there was a camera up there that was using computer vision or OpenCV that's been trained by a thousand pictures um, to determine if the user's wearing a mask or not. If they're wearing a mask, then it it'll take a, the camera takes a picture of the customer then determines if they're wearing a mask. But we wanna switch that into a real time video stream identification, making sure that there's less delay and it's more reliable. We also wanna continue testing to um, better the code. As we see on the stock photo, we already found some errors that we fixed. Finally, we wanna feed it a lot more data. A thousand pictures may seem like a lot, but it isn't. We need to, take, we need to feed it pictures with different people wearing different types of masks, different ethnicities, different angles, lighting, et cetera. We plan to sell CV19 in three different packages, each offering different technologies. There are over 6.6 .6 million potential customers in the US alone with a market size of 53.6 billion in security systems, which is expected to reach 78.9 billion by 2025. So by now you're wondering, who am I? Well, I'm Lavish Sinha, and I'm a rising sophomore in the Bay Area, meaning I'm 14. If you have any questions, those are my contacts. Thank you. All right, thank you, CV19. Judges, any questions for Navish? Sure, I'll start off again. Navish, thanks for the presentation and great job using what you have available around you. Um, so I, I work in a building, normally when, when we can do things in person, where it is card access. And the easy way around that is people simply wait by the door and kind of sneak in when someone else passes by. Have you thought about adding um, an additional alert sensor when someone does that so that they get caught as well? Oh yes, I do um, want to add a notification system for employees so that, oh, a person entered without a mask, a person didn't. And it's gonna work together with that tracking system to see how many people are in the room. So if it says there's like eight people, but then there's like nine, they know something's wrong, somebody sneaked in here. Great question. Rafe. So, so now just just follow up on that. So the, the idea is that um, even post entrance of a building, you're gonna be able to track whether or not they're, they're using a mask um, throughout, like if it's at a restaurant, for example, that they have the mask on at the appropriate time. So I see the value in what you've built, not only for just entrance and exit part, or just at the door, but also beyond and using it uh, throughout. Yes, definitely. We can implement the CV technology to any security cameras in the room. And then what I've been interested in doing is creating a 3D map instead of relying on the ultrasonic sensor of the room so you can better track where everybody is. Have you talked to uh, commercial real estate owners yet of commercial buildings and had the chance to float this by them as well? I'm curious who the, who the eventual buyer is. is it the owner of the commercial building or is it the restaurant who leases out the space? Um, I really didn't think about that. I'm going to be honest, I'm not a business guy. I do not know that much. But I was able to talk to some smaller mom and pop shops in the area and mm -hmm. they thought it was a pretty good idea. Wonderful. Hey, great. Thank you, CV19. Our next team up is Behind the Mask. Can you guys hear me okay? You're good. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone, and thank you for your time. My name is Sebastian Schur, and I'm a member of Team 16. During the dis customer discovery phase of the design thinking process, I was interviewing a family friend and asking them questions, and they were giving me their responses. When all of a sudden, in the middle of this interview, the person just stopped, looked up at me and said, I am really scared right now. By delving deeper into the statement, I was able to pinpoint two key issues behind this person's fear, misinformation and uncomfortable masks. Taking these two pain points, which my team saw reflected throughout all of our customer discovery interviews, my team and I came up with our product behind the mask, a comfortable, customizable mask with a QR code that leads to a website aimed to put an end to misinformation. From here, my Shahita will discuss the mask. Hi, my name is Shreetha Palpatul. So let's talk a little bit about the product itself. Our teammate Octa Octavia designed all of our mask prototypes. So I'm gonna play a video that details certain aspects of the mask. Hello, my name is Octavia Luna Harai, and I have been sewing masks during this pandemic. I built the mask prototypes for our team using three common mask fronts. A scoop, a dart, and a simple pleat. Various strap designs fit different people's faces and accommodate their needs. On each customizable mask, 
is a wire for a better fit in the QR code that leads to our website. So this is our website. As you can see, we have numerous elements, but the core of the site is the latest news section. When a user scans their QR code, we extract their location and send them to the latest news section, where we give them targeted information based off of where they are. For example, this is a picture of someone scanning in their QR code. The software identifies that they have scanned the code in from Fremont, California. You can see a clear list of information has been given to them, such as local businesses that are open, the number of cases and deaths in the area, local retailers that sell our masks, and the possibility that they have COVID-19. So, in the future, we plan to expand upon this. And you may be wondering, how exactly are we going to add a feature that tells our users whether or not they have COVID-19? So we plan on partnering with Apple and Google's contact tracing software in order to notify our users of the possibility that they have COVID-19 or if they have been in contact with someone who may have had COVID-19. When a user clicks on the rewards tab of our website, we will take them to this Google form where they can record certain data. Users receive points based off of how responsible they are in terms of wearing a mask and following safety guidelines. We will cross-check their responses with our database and location tracking systems in order to ensure their honesty. We decided to incentivize this process in order to encourage those who do not wear a mask to wear one. Overall user benefits of our product include a comfortable mask and a database of clear targeted information. We believe that both of these benefits will result in less fear and uncertainty in the world. As of now, we have to overcome the challenge of marketing to ensure customer trust and a lack of funding. So we need sponsors and a reliable marketing team. In the future, we also plan to work with technology companies in order to further advertise our product. We would also like to educate low-income communities on, the, on why wearing a mask is so important. Our team includes Angela, Anthony, Sebastian, Octavia, myself, Shrihita, Elizabeth, and Afsana. This is a picture of our team. So thank you for listening. If you would like to further learn about our product, you can contact us at either of these emails. So now I would like to open up the stage to questions. Thank you, Behind the Mask. Okay, judges, any questions? Yeah, I can go first this time. Um, I, I love the prints of the masks, by the way. Um, I'm curious how you think about um, the, when you talk to users, uh, how they perceive the, I guess, tension between uh, privacy of data, of like where they are in their location every time they're using the QR code and uh, uploading, or I guess clicking on a link that, that kind of tracks them of where they are versus access to that real-time information. And do you think that, did users feel like it, there was a net benefit to doing that, even if they, you would be able to get access to data on where they, where they are? So as of now, we actually haven't spoken to users or introduced our product to them. But in the future, that is definitely something we will consider discussing, um, discussing about because we understand that we do need to respect user privacy. Great. Okay, thank you. Judges, that's about all the time we have for questions. Um, next team will be Denser. Thank you, Behind the Mask. Whenever you're ready. Double check you're not muted. All right, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Rudy Anafka, and along with my team, we have developed Denser, a crowdsourced application to access your favorite location's real-time crowd density. Let's start the tour. Next slide, please, yes. Have you ever wondered when is the optimal time to go to the grocery store, the laundromat, or your favorite restaurant? More generally, have you ever wondered when the least amount of people are at your favorite place? There's no need to worry anymore with Denser. Denser informs you about just how crowded that favorite public space is in just one tap. With its invaluable features, you'll be able to better plan your day by avoiding crowds, saving time, and creating ease of mind, knowing that you will better manage your risk of contracting COVID. Now, I'll pass it on to my colleague, Ravon, to elaborate upon the features of the app. Let's start, for example, with our beloved coffee chain, Starbucks. The home screen of Denser, located on the left side of the presentation, makes it easy to search for your nearby Starbucks. Then you'll be able to see ping colors that correspond to how crowded these locations are. 
you'll instantly see the general level of crowdedness, but you can click the details button, which leads to an advanced analytics page as seen on the right side of the presentation. This page shows percent occupancy and the best times to go. These metrics are based on historical data aggregated from information businesses provide, crowdsourced user data, and publicly available maximum occupancy numbers. To collect those metrics, Dancer not only relies on businesses, but also on your phone's location services to determine the duration of your visit to a place automatically. The Recents tab, located on the left side of the presentation, lets you view your past trips. You can also make any time adjustments and add how many people accompanied you on your trip to help Dancer better serve its users with reliable data. The last major feature in the Favorites tab, located on the right side of the presentation, where you can quickly see the crowd status of your favorite and frequently visited places. With an amazing front end already developed, one of the next steps is to develop the back end of Denser, so we can upload crowdsourced user data onto servers, which will help extend Denser's presence beyond business establishments into places like parks and beaches. As our user base grows, we intend to rely more on crowdsourced location data in the pursuit of achieving real-time density tracking in the future. We also intend to solidify and integrate our revenue model, whether it involves in-app advertising or a subscription-based model. In either case, our venture is e easily scalable and profitable. If you would like to contact us to gain more insight on our product, please feel free to send us an email. We are looking to expand our team to include back-end developers, outreach specialists, business strategists, and more. Finally, on behalf of the entire Denser team, we, we appreciate you taking the time to listen to our revolutionary solution to reduce crowd density. Any questions? Thank you, Team Denser. Judges, any questions? Yeah, um, I'll, I'll start with one. It's my three-year-old talking. Um, for when when you recommend that a place is too dense for um you know that too dense for someone to actually want to go does your system think about making nearby suggestions of where else to go hi can you hear me yes sachi we can hear you. Hi, yes great question my name is sachi and so yes denture does provide that information denture will look at what is the nearest location and inform you of that that location first Um, just to add a little bit onto that, if you see on the left side of the presentation currently, you'll see right under high crowd, it'll say two Starbucks less crowded nearby. So it gauges these metrics and automatically determines which Starbucks are um, a much more viable option to go to. Great, hey, thank you. You could also, uh, to build on that, you could also potentially work with Starbucks to provide targeted advertising to certain locations to help smooth out um, the sort of number of occupants in each location. Uh, that might be a way to generate revenue for the business as well. Um, and my only other, it was more of a comment, but you should probably talk to CV19 lock as well, because there's probably some data that you can leverage from their locks uh, in terms of occupancy data. Thank you for that advice. That is great advice. And we really like those ideas. And I love seeing the collaboration across our teams in this bootcamp. <laughs> We have time for one very short question, um, if either of our judges has one. Uh, I, well, I guess, well, I don't think it's a short question, but uh, I'm curious how you get enough data to uh, ensure that you have a large enough sort of sample size that you can actually get accurate data sets like this. Yes, that is a great question. So how we, we aggregate data as a baseline our first, we have uh, two sources of aggregating data. The first is Dentures tracks its users' visits through their phone's geolocation and the, time, the timing of their visit. Then Dentures asks users to verify this information. As a baseline, Dentures hopes to work with businesses to provide historical data and crowd trends over time. And then I'll pass on this question to my colleague, Iomita, Iomita to explain how we improve our real-time data over time. What we do is initially, we rely more on historical data so we, because we want to provide the most accurate data to our users. And then as we incentivize more businesses to join the app, 
since they'll have more transparency with their users, what we'll do is we'll, is with, is with an increasing fan base and user base, we'll, we'll be able to increase our instantaneous data. Excellent, thank you, Team Densar. Thank you. Our next team will be Smile Mask. Whenever you're ready, you can go ahead and share screen and start your presentation. Thank you. Hello and welcome. Um, my name is Galila Arvisu from Team 9, and I will be explaining an improved mask my colleagues and I have been working on the past three weeks. Good afternoon. My name is Jasmine Mendez. I am a representative from Team 9 at your service. Thank you for your time and for your attention. Our product name is Small Mask. Smile mask, a mask that smiles back. Protection. During our customer discovery phase, we originally had planned on targeting people who refused to wear a mask, but we soon realized that a large number of people who do wear a mask strongly dislike or even fail to constantly wear their masks in public. And this is due to the uncomfortableness and um, ear discomfort that they experience. Smile Mask uses various materials such as cotton, polyester, and nylon to satisfy our buyers to the fullest of our ability. Our masks provide the consumer with four layers of breathable fabric to protect them as much as possible. Beginning with the innermost layer, nylon, requires the kinetic heat energy as it absorbs sweat, allowing it to provide its cooling factor. The middle layer, polyester, evaporates the sweat as it allows it to escape to the pores of cotton. The last layer, cotton, is a renewable resource known for its greatest advantages in breathability and water-resistant fibers. In the nose area, we provide our consumers with a twist tie to adjust the grip of the mask and prevent earwear to fog up. And finally, buckle tape is added to the middle of the cotton layer, which opens and closes an accessible pocket with an additional layer of cotton, which can be manually detached and reapplied depending on the user's preferences. Our goal as the, as the creators are to satisfy our customers to the fullest of our abilities, which includes solving the issue regarding ear discomfort. Small masks are made with a 15 millimeter in width elastic band around the mask and ear straps to provide flexibility and resilience to the user. We provide our consumers with a reusable and attachable cotton sleeve to prevent ear irritation and folding. In addition, Small Masks introduced the first mask with metal rings, which allows our buyers to adjust the grip on the ear depending on their preferences. Special thanks to Jasmine, the customer I interviewed, seemed to loudly protest her discomfort towards the elastic bands on many face masks. She claimed when running, it became irritable and her ears would turn red. And this is mostly due to her wearing glasses and having to have the band at the same time. With her input, we are able to make a mask for her pain points. Meet our creators, which consist of various titles, such as graphic designers, videographers, animators, and material researchers. In conclusion, people who wear our mask will find it com extremely comfortable and breathable enough to exercise and to just do their daily routines in public. Our, ma our masks are washable and reusable despite the long and exhausting day you've had. With your help, Smile Mask will give people the opportunity to stay safe and prevent the spread of COVID-19 while keeping their daily routines. Thank you for your time and we look forward to working together. Smile Mask is brought to you by four female high school teenagers in the, at the USC Technology Innovation Three Week Bootcamp. The goal is to help people of all ages to wear a mask that is breathable, comfortable, and completely functional. Order in the next 40 minutes and you will receive two additional free masks. Free shipping and handling in the US and US territories. Thank you for choosing Smile Mask. Thank you, Smile Mask. All right, judges, any questions? Sure, I'll start. Um, so I think clearly with masks, there really is no great, perfect solution for that's one size fits all. Um, I think ear discomfort is something that many report. I'm curious if you've looked at these gadgets called ear savers and, and maybe thought about um, including like an ear saver with your, with your mask. So originally, uh, first, oh. it's okay. Go ahead. So originally we did research this and we had seen a lot of um, solutions to the ear problem. And we decided that maybe we should incorporate it some in some way but we didn't want to steal anybody's idea, so we decided to use our own. Um, but, it, but with furthermore research during this um, creation, we did see that there were, there were more that were still uh, continuously being made. 
So then uh, we decided to maybe just incorporate it um, after at, at the end. Um, if, instead, if somebody doesn't want to use our um, design for the ear, somebody could use something else. Okay, judges, we have time for one short question. I'm, I'm curious, uh, all of consumers can use this, but who's the early adopters in your mind? For us, we'd recommend, um, we'd strongly made this mask to be used by athletes or specifically people who sweat a lot because during our customer discoveries, many people found the masks were uncomfortable because of the sweat and not allowing them to breathe, which is why we provided these various materials such as polyester and nylon to prevent these problems to happen with other consumers. Fantastic, thank you, Small Mask. Next team up is NAV19. Hi everyone, my name is Laxmi and my partner is Althea. Today, we will be presenting NAV19, a website with unbiased information and an incentivized feature to promote adherence to COVID-19 regulations. You put on your mask tight and go outside for groceries. Look, it's Joe. His mask looks weird. It looks like that photo you saw online of dogs wearing masks the wrong way, under their chin, not covering their nose, even around their heads. Joe isn't covering his nose. You approach him at a distance and say, hey, you're wearing the mask the wrong way. Joe doesn't listen because he doesn't want to believe someone so biased. He even says to you that masks aren't necessary. Joe goes online and sees a website about COVID-19 that claims it's unbiased and thinks, hey, this is right up my alley. Not like that person outside earlier. This is a common story seen through all of our customer discovery interviews. Family and friends were unwilling to follow COVID-19 regulations due to misinformation and carelessness. People not wearing masks is a serious health crisis to the world, especially during this pandemic. So what better way to motivate than through valid information and awesome rewards? Introducing NAV19. Which is already live and developing with ADHD, dyslexia, and colorblind friendly versions. NAV19 has clear information and shareable infographics for social media, easy and visual access to up-to-date data on the number of reported cases state by state with links to government health websites, an engaging quiz with explanations, the ability to search for local legislation, and a rewards feature that allows users to submit photos of themselves and get rewards based on a number of likes. Through these features, NAV19 aims to promote, to promote um, proper action and combat misinformation. There's actually no other website or app that motivates the following of COVID-19 regulations through rewards. Companies, private, small, and local can endorse our website by offering discounts or services as rewards, which will bring in business, stimulate the economy, and protect the nation from COVID-19. With our compelling, unbiased information to attract people with diverse perspectives, and social media style feature, many will be attracted to our website, just like Joe, who learns after using the website and gets rewarded for wearing a mask right that he should always follow COVID-19 regulations. Our team is full of talented and motivated individuals that are ready to take on anything. We plan on soon deploying our website to host users as well as acquiring business partners and sponsors to help make our community a better place. To reach these milestones, we need financial support, your support. Thank you so much for listening. Any questions? Thank you, NAV19. Questions from our judges? Yeah, I have one question to start to kick off. Um, I'm, I'm excited that the website's already up and running. I want to check it out. Uh, one question that I have, though, is how do you think about vetting the sponsoring companies that you're, you want on the platform to ensure that the information stays unbiased and that the, the purpose of the, the website to provide trusted unbiased information um, isn't corrupted in any way. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's very important that um, information is fact-checked. So um, 
when it comes to different websites, we will look at which ones are the most neutral and compare multiple sources, potentially even trying to, as the website expands, um, creating a machine learning algorithm that basically analyzes the different words where it can see which um, words they compare it to being more neutral while also um, fact checking with actual live people. So we have that dual um, fact checking. Okay, thank you. One more fast question. So, you know, who doesn't like reward? I'm, I'm kind of wondering if you've talked to different age groups to see the differentiation and the kinds of rewards that they want to sort of follow these, these protocols, if you've seen like a difference in, in what people like and how that's influenced your um, website development. In our customer discovery interviews, every single person we talked to said that they would always like rewards to continue to motivate them to keep doing the right thing, which is wearing masks and social distancing. And with the different um, business partners that we have, so we could have anything from retail to food, where you can have discounts on clothing or um, a restaurant, maybe even merch, um, it allows us to get a very diverse audience because although it, um, some big um, demographics are like youth and then just above that who are not always following COVID-19 regulations. We want to reach as many people as possible with our incentivized feature by getting a variety of partners. Excellent. Thank you, NAV19. All right, our next team up is SafeWorks. Hi, my name is Yuma Usua. And my name is Angelina Lee, and we are two of the founders of SafeWorks. I would first like for all of you to imagine this. You are forced to leave the safety of your own home while putting yourself as well as your loved ones at risk. This is the everyday reality for 55 million essential workers in the US. In our customer interviews, one fast food worker mentioned that their managers are graded based on how fast they serve the drive through during the restaurant's busiest hours, the workers would be pressured to prioritize profit over their own safety. This person is not alone in their experience. Higher stress levels seen in 86% of essential workers have been linked to lower productivity rates and a weaker immune system, leaving these workers more vulnerable to the virus. As seen in these statistics, we recognize that the demand for a safe workplace will only grow as companies look for a safe way to reopen. Therefore, we have developed a gamification system that incentivizes employees to follow safety procedures. Gamification is the integration of game-like features into non-game areas. Our app, SafeWorks, uses game-like customizable features such as a live leaderboard, point system, badges, and rewards. So in, in the app, companies can set daily, weekly, or even monthly goals that employees can follow in order to earn points. This ensures the workplace stays clean and employees feel motivated to keep it clean. We are also developing a passive radio frequency identification or RFID tag sticker to put on the name tag of essential workers. As seen in the first image, the RFID reader placed next to a door frame would record who the person is and when a person enters or exits a room for non-invasive contact tracing. When a room reaches a certain capacity, the sensor will send a warning through the app. We would also install RFID readers above bathroom sinks. When a person walks up to a sink, the, the timer will automatically start for 20 seconds, turning green after the time has elapsed. This data from the RFID reader above the sinks would be sent to the app to claim in-game points for proper hand washing. In order to make our idea become a reality, we would first need support from those with a strong coding and engineering background. The trial phase would allow us to see how employees from different professions would interact with our solution. Finally, upon completion of our trial phase, we would integrate the feedback that we received to finalize our product and apply necessary changes. Now meet our team. We're a group of four high school students with a joint passion for solving problems. With our diverse backgrounds and range of skills, we have been able to approach this problem with a unique perspective. And during a pandemic that seems to have no end, our solution, SafeWorks, provides an innovative method to build a safer workspace. By prioritizing employees' health, SafeWorks will promote long-term results, such as lower stress levels, better productivity rates, and great trust in the workplace. It will allow millions of essential workers to be able to return to work with less stress about whether their jobs will be putting their health at risk.
So thank you so much for listening and we really appreciate your time. Thank you, Safe Works. Judges, any questions? Sure, so ha have you interviewed essential workers to find out what are some of their key struggles with maintaining safe workplaces? Um, yes, we have actually interviewed a variety of people ranging from mailmen to fast food workers to teachers. Some of the main problems are that there, it's very hard to social distance in some areas such as the fast food industry and other problems. So in order to combat that, we allow companies to make their own goals and adjust the point values accordingly so that this app can be compatible in other professions, not just one industry. I'm curious within the companies that you're going to sell to, who, um, who the buyer, ends up being? Like, what does that persona of the person who uh, ends up buying it, implementing it uh, look like? Uh, would Rio like to answer this question? I can answer. So um, part of our profit will come from in-game ads and in-app purchases. Um, the other part would come from installation fees. So the buyer would be um, probably someone higher up in the company. Okay. Thank you, SafeWorks. All right, our next team is UV Clean. Sweet. Hello, we are UV Clean. Clean your mask. In the world. My name is Lukman Abdi. These are my colleagues, Sydney and Mohawk. Hi, I'm Sydney Lin. Hi, everybody. I'm Mohawk Agarwala. We'd like to first share some personal experiences we faced during the coronavirus pandemic. In Las Vegas, I've witnessed the impact that COVID-19 has had on the homeless and low-income populations. Many services are tight-spaced or low on money during this time, and they are generally more vulnerable to COVID-19. In Salt Lake City, we are facing a severe mask shortage. Local hospitals are in need, and as a result, they are asking for volunteers to create masks for their patients. In Charlotte, local businesses have been affected drastically by the pandemic. Many up-and-coming businesses are looking for ways to be more sustainable and productive. So, we focused on mask shortages, sustainability, COVID-19 disparities, and effective disinfection. For extensive primary research, we interviewed over 20 people and found that most use daily disposable masks. A doctor told us that he worried about the time it took to wash cloth masks. A retail worker noticed the increased amount of masks littered around the mall and also questioned how to properly wash a cloth mask. Our solution is UV Clean, a device that utilizes UVC rays to clean masks more efficiently. We want convenience so that users can save both time and energy with effortless cleansing of masks and at the same time, the aromatherapy feature will provide comfort and luxury. Our leading edge innovation uses the world's top quality research and materials to construct and design the device. Sustainability is a byproduct of our device, ensuring that mask waste is minimized by promoting multiple time use, the device itself is also biodegradable and recyclable. UV clean set prices and business model allow all socioeconomic classes to have accessibility to good health. Lastly, our device is necessary. Since alcohol and chlorine can damage mask microfibers, we want to create a relevant and useful device which will be helpful in future crises. So how does UV clean work? Firstly, place a mask in a device and shut the container until a green indicator comes on. Once your device is closed, the disinfection will continue for either five seconds for 90% mask sterilization or 15 minutes for 99% sterilization. The main takeaway is that our germicidal fluorescent bulb can disinfect a mask with an efficiency rate up to 99.9%. .9%. So here we have the prototype. It's made to be the shape of an everyday item like a pencil case or cassette to be portable and durable for the user. The main features include the UV rays emitted from the UV bulb and an aromatherapy section for a purification. Then of course, the indicator light tells us the status of the mask. Currently it's red, so don't open it just yet. We identified our target market as individuals between the ages of 23 and 54 in the upper middle class. Our secondary target market are public places such as small businesses and community centers, which would allow our device to be more accessible to all. Our one-for-one -one business model also improves our device's accessibility, as we will donate one device to a homeless shelter for every device sold. Finally, UV Clean costs $30 to manufacture. This sells for $80, allowing a net profit margin of 
In the future, we'd like to address certain drawbacks such as how to get UVC exposure to shadows formed by folds and how to minimize warm up rates. We also want to perform more tests on different types of coronaviruses and implement a partner mobile application that will track UV Clean's usage. We are UV Clean. Thank you for your time. You can scan the QR code at the bottom right for more information concerning UV Clean. Thank you, UV Clean. Judges, questions? Awesome idea. One question that I had is uh, if, if you looked into IP and patents on any of the technology um, and what, what you guys can do at UV Clean from a defensibility standpoint in, in terms of applying for patents or getting anything on the technology, or if that's possible. Yes, so I'll answer that question. We are currently researching different patents and looking at other competitor brands, but ours is unique in that we have the aromatherapy as well as it is focused specifically for masks and perhaps in the future other PPE um, essential items, whereas most are just focusing on um, daily household items such as phones or keys. Okay, we have time for one short question. So as a, as a business model, have you, so when I think about this, this could be as pervasive as USB charging ports, which you find everywhere, right? So these kiosks where you can go and, and charge your phone. Have you thought about that kind of model where you would just deploy these kiosks? I'm not sure if that's what you're, what you're considering for um, working with retailers. So yes, actually for when we were saying we would market it as our second target market towards community centers or small businesses, that that's basically what we were saying like they would be able to have the device in the, the building and um, customers would able would be able to use it excellent thank you UB clean our next team up is avert alert And 56.6 million students around the whole nation will not be able to attend in-person education and will not be able to meet with their friends because of COVID-19, but specifically because of social distancing. This is a big number, but there are other industries being affected by it, such as gyms, churches, sporting events, restaurants, retail travel. And this is one of hundreds of industries that are being affected by social distancing, and we need to do something about it. Good afternoon. I present to you a vert alert where social distancing is done right. Today, we're going to present our T7 sensor concept, which will revolutionize and change the world of social distancing and COVID-19 as we know it. Our T7 sensors communicate with each other through radio waves to help encourage individuals to socially distance, as well as informing corporations of how well they're social distancing within their jurisdiction. Because of the incredible simplicity and versatility of our device, it can be implemented into things such as bracelets, keychains, pieces of clothing, or masks, or anything that the average person would use on a daily basis. Whenever two sensors are within six feet and are determined to not be social distancing, it sends a signal to a central computer letting the company know uh, every time somebody is not socially distancing. On top of that, it gives a little trigger to the individual, such as a vibration, a light, or a sound to let them know that they're not socially distancing. When researching possible electronics to include, we found three different things, all of them within the size of a dot. Now, you might be wondering how this would work. If some people, if we sold this individually, some people would have the device and some people wouldn't, and that wouldn't be efficient in containing coronavirus. Instead, we intend to sell to larger corporations such as schools, restaurants, houses of worship, gyms, or sporting events. We expect that the cost of goods sold will be approximately $6.50, while the price per unit will be $10. What we look forward to accomplishing in the future is designing the hardware, including the capsule that will contain all of the other technology in, on the inside, and improve the software so that all of the information, when two people come too close to each other, will get updated to a main database so that way it will, it will be much easier to contain a coronavirus outbreak. We also wish to speak to larger corporations, including some technology corporations, so that we can develop this product. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Joshua Weissman. These are my partners, Darius Walker, Rick, Rick Carvajal, and Juan Colon. And have a good afternoon. Excellent, thank you, Robert Alert. Are there any questions from our judges? So I'll start with one. Um, 
whenever you have a lot of alerts, I think you can kind of become numb to them and maybe ignore them. And also there may be a low tolerance, right, by uh, workers for wearing these. Have you talked to different uh, potential users to see what their feedback is on this? Uh, we have not yet. So our goal is to find what the balance is between something that, ha a notification that happens often enough where the person might be a little annoyed and would have to, would then instinctively socially distance, but also not too often where they would be too annoyed and not want to use the object or just take it off immediately. Awesome idea. What, one question that I had is uh, how you think about the benefit of avert alert as a standalone hardware plus software device versus uh, building on top of like say the phone, something that everyone has in their pocket, leveraging the hardware sensors there and then building the software app on top of that. Um, yeah, definitely. We wanted, we were thinking of taking this as an individual unit, um, installing it in bulk. Uh, for example, it could be attached onto shopping carts so that the person who is shopping wouldn't even have to interact with it. It could be attached to bracelets. So whenever you're entering a sport event, you can just put on a bracelet and then take it back off or restaurants where it can be wrapped in a cleanable material so every time you go into a restaurant, you can put it on and then take it off and they can be cleaned by the workers. Excellent. Uh, we have time for one more short question. Uh, I'm just curious where you are in the product development and sort of what, uh, what next steps are and sort of what resources you, you need to accomplish those next milestones. So currently we're ready to start ending pre-production and start making like actual scale model, models of it in the real world. Currently, like our main focus is just fine tuning it so it's accessible to everyone. It's really important to everyone on the team that it's very accessible, marginalized populations who might not have that much money who are in dire need of better solutions. Excellent, thank you, Avert Alert. Our next team up is Mello. Hi, my name is Jeffrey Tadeo and I will be presenting with Elaine Young. A few days ago, a friend of mine told me that she was suffering from an illness. She wasn't infected with COVID-19, although you could say that this was caused by it. This was an illness of the mind. She became depressed, isolated, and tired, feeling trapped in her house for months on end, doing nothing but watching Netflix. Her struggles are a common pattern among many of the people we interview. In fact, 50% of Americans have reported that their mental health has been impacted by COVID-19, a statistic that only contributes to the already existing concerns for mental health presented by social media. A recent study also shows that 40% of respondents reported an increase in social media use. People all throughout the world have been met with boredom and time and time again fail to comply with the guidelines for safe social distancing. So how can we continue to maintain our mental health as we are isolated from friends and family alike? Our team has worked for the past three weeks to present to you our solution. Mellow is an application to combat mental health issues and allow for healthier, safer socialization solutions. In this video, I will walk you through a demo of Mellow. Please scan the QR code or visit the link in order to view the prototype. After logging into the app, you'll be taken to the home page. Every day after 5 a.m. local time, you'll be asked what your mood is for that day. The moods will appear on your mood tree, which will grow as time passes by. This allows for you to have your own personal mood diary to look back on. Next, we have the board, which showcases images, videos, and texts from your friends, family, and coworkers. The board allows for both anonymous and non-anonymous posts so that people can post freely. Content will be moderated through an AI so what may be perceived as sensitive content will be filtered. There is also an activity generator which will display a daily task for you to do, along with a generator for places to go, things to do, and a positive message to read. This will help combat the apathy that's associated with isolation, along with encouraging the user with messages to keep on persevering through the pandemic. A source of revenue comes from the sponsored ads that will occasionally show up in the generated field. Direct messages make it so that anonymous posters can reach out in private messages to those that respond to the board post or vice versa. The profile section allows you to change your picture and other settings. You can choose to keep your Mutri and profile private or public. Mellow is unique from popular social media applications because mental health is the main focus of our platform. Also, rather than being targeted at the individual, 
Mellow encourages social connection through safe in-person and virtual interaction. Furthermore, we plan to implement a six-foot distance alarm through the use of Bluetooth and ultra technology to, gain, to gauge the distance between devices. We have proposed partnerships with existing businesses, such as Novid and MyChart, to make this a reality. We ask that you donate to our nonprofit to kickstart Mellow. Our first stretch goal is $10,000, and our sponsors will receive tax deductions and the ability to advertise their brand on our app. I'm Jeffrey Tadeo, and this is our team. Thank you for listening to our presentation, and feel free to ask any questions. Thank you, Mello. Any questions from our judges? Yeah, so thanks for, for tackling, I think, the difficult issue of, of mental health. I think it could benefit uh, many people out there. I'm kind of curious if you've talked to both mental health experts and also uh, individuals on the other side who might be using this platform to see what would be most, benef most beneficial from both of those perspectives. So I've actually talked to my counselor and other teachers about what may be best for targeting mental health issues. And we've seen that usually what happens is that people have gotten to the point where they don't really have anything to do during the pandemic and they feel very isolated and apart from their friends and family and they want something to do during that time. But there's not a lot of options since you can't really go out. So our purpose is to create options that you can do at your home or in your local area without endangering your health or your family's health. Okay, thank you. One more question. Yeah, I, I, I echo um, what Professor Ring is saying about uh, this is a problem that um, we aren't talking enough about. So I'm really excited to see you guys come, come up with a solution here. Um, have you thought about instead of using uh, for, for a business model instead of going after and getting sponsored ads to sell this directly to uh, healthcare experts or healthcare providers um, as a service that they could then use for their um, their end users so whoever they're helping um, either through counseling or if they're treating them through like a healthcare plan or whatnot and going directly that way well the purpose of our app is to make it accessible for everyone the WHO has said that one in four adults are suffering from mental health issues and or will suffer from them in their lifetime. So we really want to create a basic model that will be accessible to everyone through the App Store or the Play Store, and it's free to download. But we will think of a business model that would, be, that would have more features that would directly target um, those that are suffering from severe mental health issues, and it would incorporate uh, tactics or methods from actual therapists that would help the user and it would become more personalized for specific disorders or the like. Excellent. Great. Thank you, Mello. Okay, those of you in this room, we have a bonus team. So we have one more team that will be presenting and that is COVID Kit. Hi, everyone. My name is Rohan Desai, and I'm here to present the COVID kit. So our team leader, Adrian Meza, had a low income and non-native English cousin that reached out to him asking for his input on flying to visit another family member in a different state because flight prices were super cheap due to low demand. There were news reports that COVID-19 may not be that harmful and the downplay of the federal government of the effects of COVID-19. This cousin was highly considering taking this trip because until Adrian spoke about the risks from his perspective and what impacts it could have on the family members. After listening to many such stories of Adrian's cousin through our customer discovery, we found out that the pandemic was negatively affecting communities of low socioeconomic status and non-native English speakers at a disproportionate rate. Further exacerbating the spread of the pandemic in these communities is the fact that many of them are considered essential workers, making the lack of affordable PVE an even greater concern. Finally, this group contains a large portion of minorities who face vast language barriers and would benefit from instructions in their own language. Enter the COVID kit, a starter kit on staying safe during the COVID-19 pandemic for households in need, designed by me and my teammates, Amy Liu, Harold Gonzalez, and Chloe Parnell. The COVID kit contains pandemic necessities, such as masks, sanitizers, gloves, and an informational poster. These kits are customizable based on factors such as family size, language, and location. People only need access to the internet in a few minutes in order to have our personalized COVID kit shipped to them through our easy to navigate website. 
Now, the largest consideration obviously involves the finances. It costs around $15 to make for us, but here's where it impacts those who absolutely need our service in the greatest regard. The kit is free, which then begs the question, how will this project ever stay afloat? Well, we've thought of a variety of methods to secure the funding for as long as the pandemic continues to affect these at-risk communities. The primary way is through consumers. Now, as we've mentioned, the product is completely free for those who absolutely cannot spare the expense for this crucial equipment. However, we leave a place in the registration for those who are able to pay for the product to donate whatever they see is fit or whatever they can in order to keep the company moving. The kit will also gain sponsors for investors and businesses to fund for a presumably limited time frame. These groups will also be recruited to solve the issue of the difficulty of reaching these communities by traditional means. Finally, advertising on the website will also help to generate revenue. From these sources combined, we feel that we will have enough funding to support this incredibly important product and truly make a difference in these vulnerable communities. If you're interested in learning further or perhaps supporting this imperative project, contact us at thecovidkit at gmail.com. Thank you, everyone. Any questions about our product will now be taken. Okay, thank you. We can take some very quick questions. Yeah, so I'm kind of curious how much education um, or have you thought about offering education on how to use and maintain all the parts in your kit for the communities in need that may not actually have access to all the relevant information uh, on how to stay safe? Oh. Oh, hi, my name is Amy Liu. And so what we're thinking of doing with our website is right now it's a pretty basic, like you have a form and you can submit and you can also have an optional donation um, in the website, but we're also thinking of adding video and podcast components in different languages. So while you're signing into the website, once you get your kit, you can scan a code on one of the informational posters and it'll take you to how to use everything in your kit. Any um, other questions? Oh, sorry. Yeah, just a quick question. Um, have you identified on the manufacturing and sort of production side, just given 10,000, the next milestone is to get 10,000 kits out there. I'm curious where you are progress wise on that. Well, I've been looking at different uh, sources uh, to get the supplies from. And so I was calculating about, there were a lot of places where you can buy in bulk, like several thousand masks mm -hmm. at a time. And we were calculating prices and it's about 10 to $15 per mask for uh, when you buy like the largest options for a typical family of three to four. So we already kind of have that kind of production side sorted out. Excellent. Thank you, COVID Kit. And at this moment, our judges are excused for deliberation. Uh, we look forward to hearing back from you soon. And as we are speaking, our um, attendees from room two are rejoining us. So you might be seeing the uh, participants list go up. We'll give them a few seconds to rejoin us and we will continue the program. All right, welcome back teams. You guys all did an amazing job and you should be incredibly proud of yourselves for your presentations and what you've accomplished in these three weeks. This is not the end of the journey though. Um, we really hope this has given you a taste of what it's like to be an engineer and an innovator. You should feel empowered to create change and we need more heroic engineers like you. So this really is not the end. This is really just the beginning. We hope that you take what you've learned and go out and make a difference. Maybe there's an interesting technology that you came across, maybe, an, uh, or you identified that there's really a need for a new material. Um, and maybe this will inspire you and motivate you to look for opportunities to push out on that research, maybe in college or beyond. Um, maybe you wanna continue with the idea you've developed here. We really hope so. In fact, we encourage you to continue with these ideas by joining the NAE Virtual Incubator. And I would like to cue a slide to just show information on how to join the NAE Virtual Incubator. So this is the engineering call to action virtual incubator that Dean Yortso has mentioned earlier. The information um, is on the screen and it's an open call, not just to our students, but to anyone who is in the audience with an idea, please consider joining the NAE Call to engineering call to action virtual incubator. 
Oh, we'll take it a minute. This is the link to the website. We'll also drop it into the chat so you can continue to see it. Uh, before we conclude today's program, I'd like to bring up Dr. Rose, our amazing lead instructor. We'll say a, a, last, um, a few last words to our students. Hi, I'm Dr. Rose. Um, I wanna begin by thanking all of you um, today and um, for coming out and supporting this amazing program. Parents, it has been an honor to work with your kids. They are super talented, motivated, and thoughtful. To the students, I have admired your high level of engagement, teamwork, commitment, to coming up with a COVID solution in less than three weeks. Um, I have been really impressed with all the ventures and the fantastic presentations you gave today. I just wanna say how proud I am of each and every one of you. The world needs innovators like you. So please continue to solve problems with empathy and creativity. I also wanna give a huge thank you to all the USC and Grand um, Challenge scholars that guided and mentored these students in the development of their ideas into a fantastic solution um, that you, into fantastic solutions that you saw today. Uh, you were the backbone of this program and it would have been impossible to provide this opportunity to so many wonderful um, students across the nation without your help. So we really appreciate all your hard work and dedication to this program. Students, you will receive your certificate next week, as well as the last survey. Um, also, the student Slack will remain up and running so you can continue to stay in touch with each other and us. Um, we will miss you and we wish you a healthy and bright school year ahead. Thank you again for this amazing summer and I truly have enjoyed working with all of you. We put together a short video um, to celebrate our time together. So I hope you enjoy that. Have a great summer. Over the last few weeks, I've really enjoyed getting to know everyone in my pod, either through our virtual hangouts or through workshops. It's been a really great experience watching everyone work so hard, and I'm really excited for our final. I want to give a huge shout out to my pod, Pod4. You guys are amazing, and it has been such a great experience working with you all these past three weeks. I want to shout out Team 8 for bonding and coming together so quickly uh, to generate such cool ideas and such a great product. Uh, even despite our virtual barriers. I just wanted to give a shout out to Team 10, my isolation innovators, for being so amazing and creative. I'm the team lead of Team 1, and I just want to give them all a huge shout out. They worked super well together, and um, overall, they're just light years ahead of where I was as a high school student, so I'm really proud of them. I'd like to give a huge shout out to Team 15 for all the hard work and dedication that we contributed these last couple of weeks. I just want to give a shout out to Team 6. I had a lot of fun working with you guys and seeing you guys open up and share your ideas as you guys worked on the project. I wanted to give a quick shout out to Group 12 for being so awesome and also give a shout out to Jesse for being such a thoughtful leader. I really enjoyed getting to know you guys even if it was virtually. I want my fellow students at the USC Tech and Innovation Bootcamp to remember how much fun we had while pitching all these crazy ideas. My favorite experience thus far has definitely been conducting the interviews to discover other people's struggles and pain points regarding COVID-19 and isolation. It's taught me a lot about the customer discovery process and its importance in entrepreneurship. Something valuable I think that everyone should get from this boot camp is understanding why the design thinking process works. My favorite activity during this boot camp has to be when we were first brainstorming ideas for our prototype. I thought it was super interesting how different people can come up with all these different solutions for essentially the same problem. I want us to remember each other because though we were virtually separated, we worked really closely together. I can't thank USC Viterbi enough for this eye-opening experience. I met so many talented individuals from across the country. And I just wanted to thank all of my team members and all of the USC staff for being so kind and welcoming. This boot camp gave us an opportunity to take all our skills and do something we're passionate about and really make something of the summer. So I would just like to say thank you. You guys are the best students I could have ever hoped for. You guys worked really hard through the design process and I am so inspired by your creativity and excitement about engineering. So thank you for the last three weeks and I wish you the best of luck in your future careers as innovators. The major takeaway that I want my fellow students to have is the fact that engineering is actually a fun and engaging field to work on. I just want you guys to remember that you are never too young or inexperienced to solve even some of the world's most challenging problems. If you want to make a difference, just go out and do it.
Fantastic. That was a great end of year, sort of our end of our three weeks video. Um, at this moment, um, I'd like to invite Dean Yortzos um, to just say a, a, maybe a few words. Well, thank you, Alice. Um, this is a wonderful presentation. Um, I enjoy tremendously all the creative ideas. Um, I sympathize a lot with one of the uh, recent uh, uh, speeches that uh, was said that, uh, you know, when I was at your age, <laughs> I, I was light years behind of what people have accomplished. I must say that I share the same, the same feeling. Uh, when I was at your age, um, I, although I participated in a number of uh, mathematical contests, I never really thought of uh, participating in innovation entrepreneurship type of ideas like this. But the future uh, has to be one in which uh, uh, whatever we do, whatever we invent, whatever we, uh, we, we realize or come up with has to have a, an application, has to have an impact. Um, and so this is actually what engineering is all about, is how to create uh, new innovations, new products, new ideas, uh, um, that impact society. And that is a fundamental uh, way to think of engineering in, in, in the future. Um, so as you went through this experience this summer, I hope that one of the things that you learned was that um, all the things that you will learn in when you pursue a, a study, a major in engineering, uh, will not be just for the purpose of simply learning something but rather on how to not only uh, uh, acquire knowledge and skills, but also the mindset, the mindset on how to apply them to solve big grand challenges uh, in the world. Um, COVID is one of the grand challenges that we're facing right now. Um, a few months from now, uh, certainly uh, COVID will be over to some extent. And even though we may be uh, working a different uh, sort of a, with different constraints in the future, um, we will return to some extent, to, the, uh, to, to a large extent, to where we were before, but the global challenges of the world will never stop. Uh, other challenges will, will develop, uh, whether this will be climate change or uh, the way we interact uh, together as, 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 uh, in, in this planet. Um, how do we solve big problems like, the, let's say, the grand challenges for engineering? And this can come from different buckets. It can be sustainability, it can be security, it can be health, can be uh, life enjoyment and, and, and uh, an enriching life. All these are key important areas where engineers can make a difference. And we want to make sure that we uh, project a different form of engineer. engineers that, as I mentioned before, work to create a better world for all humanity because this is a, a, we live in a, in a, in a precious world and we're going to make sure that we keep this world going and making life better for everybody on it. Um, so I'm very optimistic and very excited by hearing all the interesting uh, innovations that we were presented today. Um, I am sure this is something that uh, uh, motivates all of you to pursue something bigger in the future. And uh, I would like to also thank again uh, Alice and Rose and the Grand Challenge Scholars that participated and made this such a wonderful experience, as well as the judges that uh, devoted uh, a significant part of their time to be able to uh, assess and give you valuable feedback. So thank you again, and Alice, uh, back to you. Thank you so much, Dean Yortzotz. Okay, so our last item of business and probably a moment that many of you have been waiting for um, I have just gotten the judging results for room one. And it appears, drum roll please, that there was a tie. Tie for CV19 lock and mellow. The judges had an impossible time making a decision. Um, at this moment, um, teams CV19 lock and mellow, please turn on your cameras. We'd like to just acknowledge you and give you some applause. Other people, go ahead and uh, unmute yourself so you can applaud our two teams. Awesome job, Thank guys. You. Congratulations. Job. Congrats. Thank you. I am shook. <laughs> All right, and let's announce the winners for room two. I just got the results in, and the team 
that is winning in room two, the judges picked proximity. Woo! All right, let's uh, teams, proximity, go ahead and turn on your camera so we can acknowledge you. Alice, we are going to add them all as panelists now, so just give us a bow. Oh, okay. Congratulations, proximity. All right, Jacob, you're in. Sailor, you're in. Go ahead and turn on your camera. Oh, nice, in the proximity background. <laughs> Congratulations, teams. Thank you. Thanks, Amy, so much. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. All right. This is a little bit of a, 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 let's just say, a little bit of an awkward format. We wish we were in person together with you to congratulate you. But congratulations to all our teams. You guys were amazing. And you've developed some really interesting solutions to combat COVID-19. We really do hope to see you continue in those endeavors. This concludes our program today. Thank you everyone for joining us in this celebration and the inaugural USC Technology Innovation Bootcamp Final Showcase. And no USC event is ever complete without the Trojan Marching Band. Be well and be safe everyone, fight on.